Hello, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Christina with Ask a Montessorian, and we are here at Creole Montessori School. Today, we're going to share with you what a nine to 12 year old classroom looks like. It is um, in the AMI community. It's here in Gilbert, Arizona, and I have my dear friend Liza with me today, and she has lots of experience teaching with this age level so it's going to be fun to hear her um, go over the classroom with you because you're going to get a lot of information from a seasoned teacher so well let me just go. say that we have been for a week the first day of school is monday and we're not ready it's always this feeling like, oh, so much to do, you know, and then the first day comes and we're okay, right? Exactly. So, you know, <laughs> there's not as much headspace in my brain to really go everywhere, but it's a lot of work for the Montessori teacher, you know, summer break, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um, I love these little cubbies here. Then looks like there's going to start some fish, Lauren. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be awesome. I was thinking maybe I put the kids in charge of getting the bigger habitat for the beardy. And you know, that's that'll be their then it'll be theirs, right? Yeah, that would be nice. So We're I think We're talking about a bearded we'll dragon. Yeah. As right a class now pet. the two like my beardy and the class beardy are staring at each other every day and it <laughs> first they would like one of them would wave like peace and the other one would just bob his head like you're a threat but now they kind of have calmed down and they they just stare at each other so anyway lots of books but not too many books because you know we want them to go out and explore that's one of the principles of Montessori is planning those trips beyond the classroom um these are the grammar boxes I was just telling the grammar about the grammar boxes to my colleagues at the farm um, lots of practice with the different parts of speech. You start off very simple with an article and a noun, and then you keep adding parts of speech until you're building sentences and um, you know classifying different parts of speech and, and so forth. And um, we have things that you can touch to represent the symbol, like the noun, or this is a verb and it's a ball, it moves, um, verbs, most of them move. <laughs> yeah, in primary we had a red ball of clay. Yeah, and then the noun is the first words that kids say. It's solid, it's a pyramid. And then other things like conjunctions link things. They're just a dash and um, the prepositions are like a bridge. You think over, under, around, and through. And then they, they will start to analyze sentence, or not analyze, they'll start to label sentences with the parts of speech yep and that moves on to sentence analysis which is coming right up where is the sentence analysis it's here somewhere i know <laughs> um and then we have other parts of speech and you get into more especially now for elementary you've got a lot more um classification compound sentences things like that this is yeah there's sentence a sentence analysis, analysis. Yep. i just don't see the chart but I think there there's go. some of them over here. Look at that. These are so well made. Mine are not well made. In fact, I didn't even have to make them. I just had to illustrate them in my write-ups. So good job, Lauren, for <laughs> making all of those things. <laughs> and ooh, a book about conjunctions. Oh, I've not <laughs> seen these ones. I had different ones when I had um, a book about prepositions behind the mask. Um, a book about adverbs up, up and away. <laughs> okay, these are awesome. Here Ruth Heller, Explore Language. Yeah, Word of the Day. I like Marion Webster's Word of the Day. I did not know they had a book. Um, this is also a, a lesson where we talk about the origins of language and the history of language. You can see how a word like sun changed over the years from Old English to Middle English. Um, proto independent Proto-Indo-European, you know, and the other language families, they're all in there. And those, it's amazing all the things that they do. This is my favorite book here, The Reading Teacher's Book of Lists. And I'm trying to think here. Years. 
Mine has a slightly different cover. You must have a newer edition than mine, but it's a great book. The word etymology. These are all really good things because at this stage, they love random facts and interesting facts, and they they do all that. There's so much cool stuff here. Ooh, and sets of things. Oh, fun, 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 fun. Now we're moving on to. This is botany. Uh -huh. I love botany. <laughs> I love those books. I can see these are the botany um, classification work at the very bottom. They're very nice. And all in files and everything. Lots of things to make samples with. And then moving on to zoology and lots of good things there. Question and answer game. I love that one. This is beautiful. It is. All this hard work. I am so excited for the first day of school, and I'm not even <laughs> a student. <laughs> look at how good you look in your teacher's area there. And then this is more um, um, zoology stuff. This is classification of animals and. Um, there's also some nomenclature cards for botany here, too. And there's some in Spanish because we are a bilingual school. And um, it's awesome. Lonnie's been doing a lot of work with the kids on getting them to work hard. Looks like you've got portfolio. Do the kids keep portfolios here? So that's the Spanish work. Oh, that's the Spanish work. Oh, cool. So there's that. They learn a lot of Spanish. And then his, this is history. The timeline looks really nice. And ooh, the history question charts. These ones are really nice. The intellectual, spiritual aspects of the culture, practical activities. So this is kind of a guide as you do research. And then in here is all the charts. For the dog lessons. So I wish you could open that up. You know what? They gave that lesson on like the rain shadow effect or graphic rains, I think is what it's called, in my 12 to 18 training. Because they wanted everyone at the farm to understand like the importance of all the Montessori lessons and what it looks like when they're younger and how it connects. Nice. And, oh, this is cool too. So we have more history, time, and timelines, phases of history, migration. Those look better than, than, than my charts. And let's see here. This is this is all like writing and art over here, right? Mm -hmm. Composition. Yeah. So she, what I'm really excited about, she's got a book binding area. Look at all the different ways that you can bind a book. Now my son loved the stick method, but she has some other ones too. Look at that. Aww. I'm gonna That's have beautiful. to, I love doing <laughs> bound books, you know, so. I remember I'm gonna have to learn some of these. Loriana's first book was yeah, in she your was, classroom. Oh my gosh, that first bookbinding project, and at the very end of the week, at the very last week of school, we finished. Like, I yeah, I shudder. I, I really cringe when I think of my first year teaching moments. <laughs> but then you get stronger. Exactly. <laughs> the thing is, though, like this classroom is like way better prepped than my classroom was my first year. This is. This is a dream. All these things with, with drawing and writing and art and like you've got sewing over here. And so many wonderful things. What is this? Oh, look at that. Oh yeah, for um, that's a a roller for you know different printmaking and things like that. Wow. <laughs> wow, you really got a lot of stuff. She does. That's beautiful. And I like how the fabric is organized like this. And different sewing and I'm just so excited this is my son's classroom <laughs> <laughs> he is going to love it 
Okay, you gotta look at this. You got some kanji symbols. And some paper and... I have some more rice paper if you run out, Lauren. Okay. That I'll give you. Because, yeah. Anyway, I love this writing desk. Let's look and at this. Kids better take care of this. They don't appreciate what amazing things this is. We got a similar one to this, but like a very simple one at the Chinese Cultural Center, which is really cool. Anyway, guitar and a couch for reading. And, oh, they have the rules for four square written out. That was an issue. <laughs> <laughs> Out. For PE. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Oh, the center, children wrote this. Science is amazing. <laughs> All those supplies and everything ready for them to do some experiments. The command cards are all ready to go. I still have mine somewhere. I think mine are the exact same as this. But I didn't have the tabs, so how nice to have the tabs to go with that. And... What would you use the hammer for? Oh, all kinds of things. Um, first of all, if you're breaking apart, like, I mean, like, I've done geodes before. Yes. You break apart the geodes. Um, <laughs> oh, now. These are really nice. These are like copper ones. This is one of the, you first demonstrate this in the creation story where you're talking about the properties of solids and liquids and gases. Um, but these ones are really nice for showing how the liquids kind of roll around on each other. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, lots of great books. And I've even read some of those. Some of those are really good books. I have a world almanac, too. That's important. Yeah, lots of materials for science. I like this science area, how, it, uh, how it's got a cabinet and then it's got an open part. It's really beautiful. And then geography and then economic geography. I love economic geography. You start off with where, where does our bread come from? All the people involved in making yes. a loaf of bread. <laughs> and then, um, and these are nicer cards than I have. Where do we get our food from? And then what does the farmer produce? What does the farmer need? What does the toolmaker need? So it looks at all the aspects of society, how we're interdependent on each other. <laughs> and so it's a fun, it's a simple way of economics. Even like the more advanced lessons get into taxes and yes, um, government tax and, and things like that. And, you know, it's all important for kids to understand that, you know, the interconnectedness of society that you can't just live in a vacuum, you know. Exactly. But everything you do affects somebody else. They have an awesome kitchen here. Just an awesome kitchen. And flowers. We get flowers every Monday. Oh, it smells good. My kids take care of things. And what else? This is just more science materials, geography materials. And it's like in, in the Montessori Elvins, geography also includes physical science. It includes economic geography, physical science, geology, and, um, and then history has its own things, timelines, and so forth. So I think all that's left is music and math at this point. Mm -hmm. So. Geometry. Oh, and geometry, yes, that's right. <laughs> To me, like in my mind, math and geometry are like the same, but they are separate in the Montessori albums at this level. Um, so, anyway, I love this lesson with the where you go from one to a million, <laughs> and um, this is all music stuff here. So, actually, let's start with music. I love teaching them how to notate music, um, different um, studying the grand staff and studying the circle of fifths and studying composers, all these different aspects of music, the tone bars, especially for 
different things. You can put them out of order and make it a sensorial um, activity to put it back together. You can pull them out to make different key signatures um, when you're notating the circle of fifths and other aspects. We have other instruments down here too. This is a great music area. My music area was not as nice. Like It is beautiful. I don't think... I didn't have the space usually to make um, to be able to put so many things on it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so let's do geometry. Let's start with geometry. So I love what we do in Upper L. You know, area, volume, surface area. Um, you know, cutting these prisms into different ways so you can find the volume, and so that you can eventually pull the formula for all these. Uh, things that when you work with it enough sensorially it's you figure out the what the algorithm is pretty quickly and then of course I've never had one of these one of these shelves that has all the materials all the geometry materials like all in one spot mm -hmm. and anyway this is all for equivalence Pythagorean um, congruency yeah. similarity and we do use the Pythagoras plates at the middle school and high school level. Nice. It is something that we use. That's amazing. That I'm going to have to like it's order. It's easy to get extensions off of that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now he said, you know, my trainer said you can, you can make paper copies too, but it is nicer if you can have, you know, the... This is different. This feels okay. different. The feeling. metal insets. These newer ones, they feel different. They do, yeah. Like, and they're painted it on the like bottom. It feels like it has plastic in it. It something. does. Yeah. I think, I'm wondering if they're like plastic coated. It's mm -hmm. obviously metal, but yeah, they still have a nice feel and texture. It's just different than I'm used to. This is for measuring triangles, getting the base and the height of a triangle. Um, you can put different triangles in here from the, sh the constructive triangles to the yellow area triangles. And if you really do that, then there's other little activities that they can give you that you can do as well. Um, and there's even the geometric cabinet, which is another material I love. And I even have one of those at home. Oh, that's the geometric box of sticks. We're also going to use it at the farm. Nice. I have my own box that I made with the woodworking teacher. So I already brought it up there. That, was, that made me happy to know that we'd be using it. A little more activities. Oh, this is a good one. The Hidden Geometry of Life. Yes, that is a good one. I want that book. <laughs> when I saw Lauren get it, I was like, I have to get this, that, that book too. I am currently reading Factfulness, though. That, I think, is the book that we're going to use for sure for the high school, and I'm still, I might do excerpts for middle school. So, anyway, these are the constructive triangles, and then there's other areas related to geometry and measurement, and even making your own polygons, making nets of those polygons, different aspects of volume of um, starting off with um, prisms, but then you can apply that to other things too. And the rope. Yes, gotta have the rope mm -hmm. for your your uh, perfect triangles that the Egyptians used. Exactly. And I have a really good book on Pythagoras. <laughs> like that. If, when you get there, let me know. <laughs> and so, this is really awesome. All the different numbers, things that they do. Now, I made a mat of the decimal board because I like to take more space and incorporate yes. fractions and I've money and that. stuff like that. <laughs> but <laughs> this is a nice um, numbers of different bases. This is something my oldest son really got into. And I'm so happy to see it there. And then the we've got the pegboard and the, the geometric plane and then the checkerboard. And the decimal checkerboard, and they're all really amazing for learning these things. This is one material that I could never do without. <laughs> I love the the decanomial chains and the bead chains. 
uh, bead bars, everything. The kids practice this. They get, not only do they get good at multiplication, but they also understand what a square and a cube is of the numbers and, you know, get that prep for the higher level math that they do later on. Um, this is a neat material because I had kids who made this material. <laughs> wow. But the, that actually took a circle and divided into a hundred pieces to try to turn it into a rectangle. So it's kind of cool to see it like visually mapped out like this. So, you know, what a neat material. Love the box of fractions. Love, this is dividing fractions. And then, oh, you have like mini strip boards here. That's pretty cool. And then we get into positive and negative numbers and all the operations with positive and negative numbers. This is the best way to help kids understand positive and negative numbers. And they even use a similar material in at the farm when we do integers. So that is one that kind of carries over a little bit. And let's see, we probably should go over here now. You wanna do this one really quick? Uh, okay, we'll do this one really quick. Okay. Um, so, oh, lots of things with factors and multiples. I love to have my kids do these at the beginning of the year. I let them use different colors and make it their own so that it's like artful. They can decorate the prime numbers in a different way. This is such a simple lesson, but I love it. You know, this is all the factors of 78. And um, when you do this, there's another activity with factors where you circle them different colors and um, it just really helps build that number sense. There's another, this is similar to another activity that's called the Siva of Aristosthenes, um, who was another Greek mathematician. And I sometimes bring that up when I give this lesson because he found a really fast way to determine prime numbers and stuff. <laughs> um, so anyway, decanomial, this is the paper decanomial. And, um, this is just the numbers. So basically, this is a representation of numbers one through 10, you know, multiplied. You know, so in a multiplication table, but it's scaled to size. So 10 times 10 is gonna be a big square, 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, whereas four times one or nine times one is going to be nine by one or four by one. So, um, and then you'll see that the, and I'm sorry, my math brain is not on right now, but the squared numbers, go down the, the middle and you'll see a different a similar pattern with probability charts and then when you get into genetics and algebra it's on surprisingly the, well let me yeah just it all that. goes well yeah <laughs> so anyway you're doing way more math than I could binomials right trinomials <laughs> and then you get into you know that one where you're getting into um, squaring and cubing cube roots and all kinds of fun things later on oh I love what they come up with where's the cubing material do you have the cubing material yet? Mm -hmm. Oh, you do? Yeah, we walked right by it. This is like gold, you know, by the time you get like fifth and sixth graders, they love to make their own binomial and trinomial squares and cubes. They'll even make other things too. At the, at the high school level, they will, there's like a binomial theorem cube and some other ones that the kids work with. And, oh, I'm, I can't wait to play around with those. I have not had, I've had the introduction to Michael Wosky's math, but when I'm done with training, I'll actually take his algebra course and his trigonometry course and his calculus courses. I will be <laughs> learning <laughs> as I go along. But, I mean, I've had a son who's taught me all these things that Montessori has helped him, and Michael Wosky is actually developing these calculus and trig materials that the kids get to use, so it's pretty exciting. <laughs> anyway, back to calculation, back to, you know, more simpler math, right? Long division, long multiplication, uh, bank game, you're, going, you're dealing with numbers up into the multi-millions here, and um, the things that they can do, it's, it just blows me away. You know, Maria Montessori was a genius. I was telling that, you know, the people I work with at the farm that are still wrapping their heads around Montessori, I was telling them how amazing that golden bead material is. 
And some of them know it as base 10 blocks, right? <laughs> but Marie Montessori basically invented those with the help of like the French Sagan and Etard, they developed some things too. Um, and then now it's a regular thing. That's, that's a standard, that's a math standard that they have to be able to, you know, have good place value sense. And they do show those quantities with those base 10 blocks that are just like the golden bead material. <laughs> it's just instead of a bead, it's a cube for the unit. And sometimes they call it a one instead of a unit, but <laughs> I tell them both because it depends on the math book. Um, but yeah, all these lovely things. On the million cube, you can go up to powers of 10 and scientific notation. You can even do negative exponents. I gave a lesson on that, making the unit cube the, the unit, and then 10 to the negative 1 power would be this, 10 to the negative 2, 10 to the negative 3. Wow. So anyway, it, I gave that lesson once to 7th graders, and they... Um, that had left the school and came back just to visit. And they're like, oh, now I understand negative exponents now. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> so anyway, I thought that was neat. <laughs> you can also do it with the decimal board too, negative exponents, but um, I like it with the wooden hierarchical material. It's, it's just fun. So there you have it. Amazing. Montessori is yep. amazing. It sure is. This is a good group, you know, just, I get to, you know, this last year, work right down the hall from them and watch them work and interact and learn. And every time I walk by, I see a lot of neat work going on. So <laughs> it's can't wait for this year where Joey's going to join this class. So, All right, let's just do one more look around the classroom. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining us. Remember to always ask a Montessorian if you have any questions. And like my son likes to remind me, please click like and subscribe and the notification bell so that you can learn about any future videos that we may discuss on Montessori. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>